Rump Nugget celebrates 11 years. Want to talk about March Madness? Let's talk about the $30,000 anniversary car and cash giveaway. Saturday, March 31st, be the lucky winner of a 2011 Chrysler 200. Entries have never been easier to earn with the over $8,000 in hot seat free play drawings every Monday and Tuesday or Saturday, March 24th, $111 in free slot play winners every 10 minutes from 4 to 8. Come celebrate 11 great years with us at the Rump Nugget Hotel and Casino. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. I'm very um, pleased that I could thank Reggie and Jose and the entire board for helping to set this up. Um, we are on a tour right now. It's starting in Vegas, in Pahrump, in Reno, in Laughlin, in Elko. So we can highlight veterans' issues and make sure that this nation fully appreciates that not only do we owe our veterans a great debt of gratitude for what they have done for this state and this nation and the world, but that we have to fulfill our obligations to our veterans when they come home after their service. Now, we pay a lot of lip service, and a lot of people in Washington are, you know, praise veterans, but we have to do a little bit more than praising and a little bit more than than saluting and clapping our hands when they walk by. And I have been working with my veterans since I, with our veterans, since I became a congresswoman. And early on, when I first started running for office, and this is back about 15 years ago, uh, the veterans community uh, uh, adopted me. And they started educating me on what were the challenges the veterans were facing and what were their needs. And it didn't matter if they were World War II vets or Korean War vets, Vietnam vets, uh, Desert Storm vets, or veterans coming back now uh, from Iraq and Afghanistan. So many of the challenges that our veterans face are universal. They all feel it and they all need the help that this nation, this grateful nation, ought to be providing. So there's a couple of areas that are important. And again, it's a matter of priorities for our nation. What's important? Our veterans are important to us. And we need to demonstrate that. When it comes to education, I was so proud to be a original co-sponsor of the 21st Century GI Bill. What does that do? It provides educational opportunities for our veterans that choose to go to college or community college. In after World War II, 8 million, 8 million of our returning GIs went to college on the GI Bill, the Montgomery GI Bill. This is an updated version and it's going to be providing the same access to our universities and our community colleges that the original GI Bill did. We're also, uh, I've also been a supporter of putting um, our resources into job training. So many of our veterans develop extraordinary skills in service to this nation. And when they come back, they we don't utilize those skills that would be so helpful to us in their civilian life. So if we provide the job training, we can integrate what they have learned and what they have done for our nation overseas and bring it back and be able to harness that knowledge and that talent when they re-enter civilian life. And of course, the other piece of legislation that I was so proud to be an original co-sponsor of was uh, the um, Hero, H Hiring Heroes Act. And what that is, is providing incentives for um, our employers to hire our veterans, make them a priority, don't give them the give them the opportunities that they need to uh, to get back into civilian life and to get a job. With the high unemployment rate in this state in particular, but throughout the United States, so many of our veterans come back and they find themselves without a job and homeless. And that's the second critical issue, education and job training, hiring our vets, and then making sure that our veterans who have worked so hard, who have fought so hard, who have sacrificed so much for us, when they come back and can't find a job, they should not be on the streets of all of our cities. Now, 14% of the homeless here in, in Southern Nevada, 14% are veterans. That should never be. And you know, I, I go and I feed the homeless veterans at U.S. Vets. 
and when I am on that chow line and I see hundreds of our veterans, people that have sacrificed so much for us just a couple of months ago or a year or so ago, and they're back here and they're living on our streets and we have them in a chow line, that should never be. So of course I was a big supporter of the Homeless Veterans Housing Voucher Program, which would put uh, provide the resources to get for 20,000 veterans so that they can um, have the opportunity to get off the streets and rent suitable housing. And I fought like the dickens to make sure when uh, program, the Homeless Veterans Housing Voucher Program, when it was on the chopping block in, in Washington, I fought like the dickens to make sure that we would not eliminate that program and provide the resources we need. It's already helped over 600 veterans in the state of Nevada get off the streets, get into suitable housing, get job training, and counseling for those that are having a difficult time transitioning back. There are other issues that I work on. It's very important to me that we provide health care for our returning veterans. It was promised to them. They're entitled to it. They've earned it. And when they come back, we have to provide it. And I want to talk about two things. Well, three things, actually. I was part of our congressional delegation when we fought so hard to get the VA clinic here in Pahrump. Why? because there are many veterans here that shouldn't have to drive all the way to Las Vegas in order to get their health care needs met. And I was here on opening day and I was so proud of that and joined our delegation in making sure that our veterans here in Pahrump got the adequate care that they needed. But I want to talk to you about two other things. Thank you, veteran Pahrump. veteran? Two other things. And they, they hit very close to home. Number one, a few years ago, I got a telephone call from a gentleman by the name of Tony Bailey. This was his story. He had a son, Justin. Early in the Iraq war, Justin volunteered and went overseas. He went to Iraq. He came back after his tour of duties. It wasn't the same Justin that left his family. He had serious emotional problems. He was addicted to prescription medication. He was obvious that he was suffering from PTSD. His family insisted that he check himself into a VA center in California and get the necessary treatment. At the time, there, either they didn't read his chart or they didn't have the necessary personnel that were trained in PTSD and emotional problems and drug addiction for our returning veterans. He was addicted to medication. They gave him more. And young Justin, 20 years old, OD'd and died in the care of the VA. It was a heartbreaking situation for his family. But what's worse, we knew that it could happen any place in any VA facility in this country. So working with Justin's family, we put together a piece of legislation that would ensure that this nation would provide adequate resources at the VA hospitals to have trained personnel that can recognize PTSD, recognize emotional problems that our veterans were having upon their return, and provide the care necessary to make sure that these young men and women are able to go on and lead their lives. The bill was called the Justin Bailey Bill. It became part of a much larger piece of veterans legislation that was passed that year. But I was very proud to stand on the floor of the United States Congress and speak on behalf of Justin Bailey, knowing that his death would not have been in vain because of him and his remarkable family made sure that the resources were provided so other families didn't have to live through that tragedy. I'm, if, if nothing else, thank you. Perhaps the thing I am proudest of in my service to the people of Southern Nevada is bringing a VA medical complex 
Parks to Southern Nevada. As I said, when I was adopted by many of my veterans while I was running for office, I knew we didn't have adequate facilities to take care of the hundreds of thousands of veterans that call Nevada home. So many of my more catastrophically injured veterans had to go to California to get care. They were away from their loved ones, away from their families, and they, um, when you're going through that trauma and that treatment, you want somebody from home. And, and these men and some women were very far away from home with no, no emotional support or backup system for them. I knew that we had to do better. And so I was able, by being um, very focused and very committed to making sure my vets get the best possible quality care that this nation can afford them in the state, most state-of-the-art uh, facilities that are available. I was able to get 147 acres transferred from the Interior Department to the VA so they wouldn't have to pay for the land. And we were able to convince a Republican administration and a Republican VA secretary to make sure that Nevada's veterans would get the best possible care. And I am very proud to say in North Las Vegas on those 147 acres, there will be a full service VA hospital, a full service outpatient clinic, and a long-term care facilities to meet the needs of the veterans in this state and in this community. And I could not be more proud of that. I just received word that the VA has turned the keys over to our local VA administration. They are going through their due diligence and now they are bringing in the beds and the equipment and checking on everything, making sure it's gonna be ready for our veterans to meet their healthcare needs. And it will be um, uh, open and ready for business this August. Yay. Yay. very proud to be here, but more than me being proud to be here, I'm proud to be standing in front of some remarkable Americans that answered the call of our country, just as my father did, and just as my husband did. He was an army doctor for nine and a half years during the Vietnam era. Uh, my father was in the Navy in World War II. Some of his proudest years were spent in the service to our nation. There are millions and millions of our fellow citizens that are fighting wars far away from us. They deserve our support and our thanks, but after we give them the support, after we give them the thanks, let's make sure we provide the resources so that they can get the health care they deserve, they can get off the streets and live in suitable housing, and they get the educational opportunities that millions of other veterans have received in the past. And with that, I thank you all so much for being here, and let's keep up the good fight. Thank you for coming. Thank you.